very quickly how everything's gone for me, and um, I think that's mainly what you want to cover. Here. I've got a really brief presentation. Is there any through? Some visuals. Um, cool, yeah, so just to tell you a bit about my company, this is Mediatonic. Um, at Mediatonic, we are a games company, um, and we've been running for about five years now. Um, so in the past uh, five years, we've made over 100 games, um, and they've been played all over the world. So, um, this presentation will be out of date, it's more like about 500 million people have played the games that we've made. Um, and we've, you know, done a huge range of, of games in that time, so... Um, we do a lot of work for clients in the kind of entertainment and games industry itself, um, helping them bring their content onto the web in new forms. Um, so <clears throat> in the past we've done a lot of games like Bejeweled, the Popcap and things like that, and then more recently um, the games for Sega and EA. And then we also make a range of kind of big original games, um, either based on existing IP and properties, like for Disney or Universal, or um, we build kind of brand new IP for the web. Uh, might be for uh, Adult Swim Cartoon Network. Um, so just to rewind back to where it all started, this is me in 2005. Um, this is our first office. We actually set up the business, I set up the business with a partner when I was at university. Um, uh, it was at the start of our final year at university. Um, so we founded the business and uh, we got an office very close to the university so we could kind of like run there between lectures and uh, answer the phone and things like that. Um, and then when we started, it was all about um, creating advertisements that people wanted to engage with. So we didn't start out making games, we started out making a whole range of kind of websites, banner ads, some games, and then we kind of did more and more games as the years went on. Um, this is one of our first games, Snowman Salvage, which is one that I wrote back in university. Um, I had a lot of flash development at the time. I was a freelance flash developer before we set up the business. Um, so I wrote a lot of the early games that we made. Um, so kind of after university, we um, had built up a fair amount of uh, money in that time because we hadn't really been spending anything at uni. So we used that to kind of finance our move to central London. We were on the outskirts of London at university, um, kind of about an hour away from central London. So we financed move to central London. Um, our first office, was, second office was down in Westminster. Um, and then at that point we started hiring, hiring people. Um, so at the end of 2006, we had about a team of about four or five people, and we were making, um, you know, more and more kind of little games. At the time, Flash was just kind of really picking up, and there weren't a lot of people specialising in it, so it was quite a good time, um, especially in the casual games industry. So a lot of the, um, I don't know if you're that familiar with the casual game space, but it's companies like PopCap Games and Big Fish and iWin, um, and that was kind of exploding at the time, so we carved out a bit of a niche in um, taking these games and making them online so people could try them out. Uh, so this is one of the games we made for EA at the time. Um, and this is one of our most successful projects of that year. Um, I think in total it's had about 40 million players, this one. And it was designed to kind of spread around the internet and drive people back to the, back to the main site. Where was the platform, like a .com project or...? This was uh, for Pogo.com, which is like a mm -hmm. casual site that EA run. It's not very big in Europe, but it's kind of massive in the US. It's a mm -hmm. huge brand. The, they have a TV channel also, I guess. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's in huge. India, it's quite popular as well. Pokemon.com. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, so that was another big game of the year. Uh, we continued to expand over the following years. So 2007, we grew to a team of about 10 people. Um, and then we, at, at this point, we started kind of make, to make more original games, or games um, that we designed for ourselves from scratch. So Amish Surgeon was one of the first ones we did for um, Adult Swim. And uh, it's still probably one of the biggest games that we've made. Um, so today, Amish Surgeons had over 60 million players, and um, it says it was number one on the iPhone. We've done Amish Surgeon 2, doing Amish Surgeon 2 on the iPhone at the moment, and Amish Surgeon Christmas. So it's kind of grown into this quite big uh, franchise uh, for Adult Swim. And um, it was also around that time that we started realizing kind of the value in the IP that we were creating intellectual property that we were creating. I started to do more and more creative things. Um, 
with that, so we started to do more and more original games. Um, and that kind of content continued to expand and grow into 2008, so we grew to more people. Um, <coughs> we, we decided to specialise at this point. Um, so up until this point, we've been kind of accepting a lot of very general work. And in 2008, we decided to specialise. Um, want to just do games and not do websites and things like that anymore. We actually spun out a separate company to do that, which is based down in Brighton. And Mediatonic just focuses on, on uh, games. And in the games industry specifically, we focus on um, the games industry, clients in the games industry and uh, entertainment brands. Um, so a lot of the, the big companies in the games industry are taking their content to the web in new forms and things like that. Um, so a couple of examples of things that year, we did the official game for the Beijing Olympics. Uh, we did the official game for the Vancouver Olympics earlier this year, which go out and kind of all the, all the Olympics partners' websites and things like that. Where is this play? Uh, this was played on all of the uh, companies that sponsor the Olympics and all of the TV channels uh, put it on their website, so it was on things like the NBC website. What was the technology like? Uh, it's yeah. all built in Flash, yeah. But this is kind of fake 3D, so it's all pre-rendered 3D rather than the mm -hmm. actual <coughs> game graphics. Um, so we started to expand out to a lot of these kind of niche project areas. Sonic was another big project that we tackled in um, that year. We built a level there so people could make their own Sonic levels online and, and, and uh, mm -hmm. customise them. Uh, so that was fun. Um, <coughs> and then we continued to make big original properties. So. Meow Sunrise was a game based on Lolcats, the internet meme, kind of crossed with cannon fodder, and you kind of control a squad of cats and go around and, and shoot up at the cats and things. Um, <clears throat> so it's kind of off the wall, wacky humour, which is, for original stuff, that's, that's more what we've become known for, is being, creating games that are a little bit quirky and a little bit um, different. Um, so that's Meow Sunrise. So this is more like actually in the game control a squad of cats and uh, lots of references to internet memes and things like that. Um, so 2009 last year um, continued to expand up to about our current size, so we have about 20-25 people here. Um, I decided investing more in kind of uh, the, the technology that we use, making processes more, because when you s scale past a certain size it suddenly becomes a lot more, you know, everyone's not in the same room and it, you know, the, the dynamic changes a little bit. So. Mm -hmm. Focusing more on those things and also um, getting a stable technology platform. Like, w what is the team mostly like? Developers and art? It's a bit of a mixture, really. We have about kind of f roughly about five people in each discipline, so about five or six developers, five or six artists, five or six um, like producers, um, designers, that kind of thing. And um, animators. And you run the business development? Or? Uh, yeah. Like, can we ask questions? Yeah, sure. What do you think? Like, you are a young company, but you like produce like stuff for big companies. Yeah. You know, like also Nintendo and stuff. Like, for example, we wanted to uh, start up a project for Nintendo in Turkey, like with my agency, but they are mostly on like marketing and sales. You know, they don't do production. Yeah. So that's the thing, and they are a very centralized company from Japan and stuff. Yeah. We had a lot of problems with that customer, for example, like yeah. give. Don't record it. <laughs> it's going to be confidential. <laughs> okay, uh, what I wanted to ask is like you do a production for that company, so yeah. but you are young and stuff, so how do they choose the you know to give the product, you know, like why you like, what do you think your strongest I part? think although we are well, relatively young company, five years now, I think mm -hmm. we have a lot of experience compared to most companies in web, particularly Flash. So we really specialised mm -hmm. in that area. And a lot of our <coughs> competition for companies like that tends to be marketing agencies who are quite general, they do a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. And you know, our proposition is we come along and say, we're specialised in making games, we have a lot of experts who are very proficient in that area, we've made a hundred games. Um, mm -hmm. So we really know what we're doing when it comes to web games and that's all we do. And that's kind of our um, unique selling point. And then there's not a, a lot of other companies, I mean there's only, it's probably less than ten that, that kind mm -hmm. of really focus on that. So. Um, that's our main strategy. <coughs> Did you grow?